So I've been using no-code table for the past few days and I've got a few mixed feelings. Let's have a chat about it. So we're gonna start things off as we usually do. Hey guys, Alex from the future here. I completely forgot to press record on that clip. That's why you can't see my pretty face. Happens to the best of us. With um, a very quick uh, overview of the website. Now, to be honest, it's kind of minimal. It doesn't really show me much. Like this is just an image of my document table. And it's kind of reminiscent of Airtable. And you might be thinking, oh, okay, great. This works the same way. Next end data storage, uh, global data centers. And that's it. It's a little bit too minimal and you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, minimal websites, minimal sort of thing, uh, T-Ball or no code DB or even base row. The other extreme of course is like smart street, right? We've got happy faces and stock images and videos and more happy faces. And, but here there's really not much. Can you make a bigger icon of a link? And okay, make.com. So it's kind of minimal. All right, there's documentation, there's some public APIs, there's all of that, there's pricing. You know what? Okay, 4 million records. But yeah, the website is a little bit too empty. It leaves more uh, to be desired for sure. Now, let's jump in into our dashboard. And the first thing that you will notice the first time that you actually log in for the first time is that you're gonna be prompted to create a new workspace. And this is what it's gonna look like. Now, the most interesting thing about this is that you can actually choose where you're storing your data. So I get it. It's kind of nice. You get to choose which jurisdiction geographically, I guess, will host your data, especially for people who are in Europe. This is key because we are bound by stricter privacy laws. So yeah, this is what it looks like and it's kind of okay. Now I've already got a workspace uh, going on and yeah, I just want to show you around how to actually start building within a uh, no code table. So let's take a look at that. As we get started with building stuff and getting a little bit deeper within a uh, no code table. Yeah, there's some interesting quirks that I'm noticing. Like for instance, databases within your workspace are called documents. I mean, you're kind of screaming and shouting tables, but there's no reference to any tables. It's documents. And are these tables or tabs or what are they? So first impressions, generally speaking, of the UI is that it's empty. There's nothing there. There's no grouping of rows happening. There's not much. And it keeps getting weirder and weirder. And let me show you what I mean. So first of all, Within any uh, new table, for instance, we've got orders right here. I've got like 50 rows. You might be wondering why do I have 50 new rows, right? Within Airtable or any other system, you would get like a few rows ready for you to kind of like start typing into. Here you have 50. You can't delete them. You can't do anything with them. So that's fun. You can only delete the ones that you actually create or like edit. If we have toy, over here, then I can delete that row. And again, there's no right click or anything like that. So super minimal. Another interesting thing, you cannot rearrange your tabs. Essentially, if I go ahead and create a new tab, a new, oh, table, here we go. And we're gonna name this clients. I cannot drag it over. So you can't really position your data in any meaningful way. Another interesting thing that I kind of noticed is that if you actually want to filter stuff, this is kind of like getting into the views territory. The problem is that your filters stick. They don't seem to move. Here's what I mean. Let's say I want to filter my table over here by name, contain, contain, contains car. Great. It gives me one row or like 50 rows. So anyway, it gives you one row. But now let's say I want to delete this, right? So I'm going to go reset. Everything looks good. If I refresh the page, oh, actually, this is fine. But technically, I had tried this before. So it would actually stick to car if I change it or like if I change tabs, press reset and change tabs. There you go. It's still there. So reset doesn't really reset anything. It doesn't reset, it's still there. I have to refresh my page and now the filter is gone. So there's definitely something going on over here in terms of cache. But 
generally speaking, the experience is somewhat snappy. You will not really have major delays with anything. It's just very annoying that you cannot have those creature comforts that we all know and love from other systems that are similar in what they are promising, like loads of rows and, and such. So it's time to talk a little bit about the kind of field types that we have available in no code table. So let's jump right in. And as it's customary, we'll just create like a new field. Let's link it to another record. And the record is going to be products. Yes, name. And now the first thing that you'll notice is that Yes, you can choose which fee, uh, which record to link from, but there's no backward link. So in other words, here in products, there is no sign of uh, a product being related to order details. So that is going to cause major issues, at least in my workflow. So from there, uh, we have product link and I guess Let's talk about the lack of a field or like field types. So we have the very, very basic things that you need to survive, but nothing more than that. No AI fields, no, um, not even like a field for storing any kind of attachment or anything like that. So again, compared to the gazillion of fields that you have with things like SmartSuite or Airtable, this is really, really, really missing the mark. But fine, let's go ahead and actually take a look at uh, a lookup. So we're going to create a lookup and we're going to look up the product price, right? And we've got 15, which kind of looks a little bit like the link. Unfortunately, you cannot actually view linked record so i'm clicking on this and nothing comes up so i can't learn more so let's go ahead and now jump into my favorite part that i like to kind of roast i guess for a bunch of different platforms that we tend to review and that's the formula field i want to know what the formula field looks and feels like and what kind of uh options we have in terms of syntax and functions and whatnot yeah this is kind of basic let's see syntax the first thing that you'll notice is that the syntax is incredibly limited that's it there's like not much else okay there's string concatenation and all of that but that is so 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 basic yeah there's not much to kind of like talk about i have to name my fields properly there's like no suggestions popping up so name there is a preview which is nice but I'm not a huge fan of how this whole thing uh, works. I feel like I want to use a spreadsheet more than I want to use this, to be fair. As we're getting closer to our conclusion, let's talk a little bit about special features because this is like a running uh, segment. This is usually what I'm looking for, you know, anything in terms of AI, any kind of like interface builder or something like that. Nothing here. Like this is it. You know what? For a paid product that is not officially like in uh, in beta or anything like that i don't i don't get it just for the privilege of having rows you get nothing and you have to pay like 30 bucks a month or something uh, yes there is a free tier so great but really uh if you want to know a little bit more about the record that you have uh for instance i'm just opening up a tab here there's nothing i would call this a beta or maybe even an alpha product definitely not a paid product I guess the amount of rows that you get with those 30 bucks a month or whatever it is, plus the ability to actually decide where your workspace resides, uh, EU or US, if you can call that a special feature, go ahead. But when I can self-host my stuff with base row, for instance, you know, it, come on. I really hope that the system progresses. There is a lot of big gaps that seem to exist. I'm rooting for them. It's a fantastic idea to have that sort of service available to us no coders. But when there are things like base row or Xano or even Airtable, to be honest, these days, it's kind of hard to uh, give all of your hard earned cash to something that is, well, let's be honest, a little bit half baked right now. That's it from me. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.